spent most of my life in and out, you know, ever since I was probably 12, 13 years old. Nine or 10 years in the yard at Goulburn. In the quarry yard, Rick Wars and raised the wire, you know. It's not the sort of yard you want to walk into and think you're top dog or try and be a hero like you was out in the street with your mates, you know what I mean? Like, cause you'll, you'll be out on the stretcher real quick. That's the thing too, when you make the decision to stop that and, and put that all behind you, good things happen too, you know. Yeah, I couldn't be happier to tell you the truth. Young soldier of God, steady march. Yo, it's your boy Dave here. This is the Fallon Show. Hope all is going well out there. How about you introduce yourself, my brother, and where you're from? I'm Dane Sims. I'm from Cruel Mission, cuz. Cruel Mission. But well, it's good to have you on the show, my brother. Yeah, thanks, bro. Mean, bro, mean. So, um, yeah, so the brother Dane's going to be jumping on the show today. Uh, Curry bloke or Aboriginal um, brother there from over in New South Wales. Um, he's been out, what, nine months now, eh, brother? I mean, you're still pretty much fresh out, my bro. I mean, how, 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 how is it um, being back out on the streets? Yeah, good, cuz. I'm, I'm enjoying myself. A lot has changed this time around, you know. So, yeah, I'm doing good, yeah. Nice, brother, nice. So the brother Dane here is jumping on today because he's got a story of redemption here. Like I said, you know, that he's been out for nine months and um, unfortunately that's the longest you've ever been out, is it, brother? Yeah, because, yeah, spent most of my life in and out, you know, ever since I was probably 12, 13 years old. 12, but, um, Yeah, times, things have changed, you know. I'm getting to the age where it's sort of getting old now and I've, I've had enough of it, you know. Yep, yep. And um, man, crime's pretty much over nowadays, isn't it? But you can't get away with nothing anyway nowadays, mate. There's nothing in it, you know, like all the boys, like a lot of the boys that I grew up with and doing things with and that, do all the same as well, you know, they've had enough, times have changed, you know, things like it's getting old, you know what I mean? I can see it as well, bro. So many brothers um, waking up to, you know what I mean? It's just times are changing, man. It's getting rough out there. Times are getting hard. And um, it's time for the boys to get on that good foot, eh, brother, and start sharpening each other, man, yeah. trying to get those yeah. brothers out of that picture. I mean, um, so, yeah, so the brother here, he's, um, like you just said, he's been in and out since he was 12 years old. Um, you know, New South Wales um, prison systems, you know, those aren't no joke. You know, he's been through some of the toughest prisons there. You know, Goulburn Prison, he was there for eight years, wasn't it, brother? Yeah, yeah, about you know? nine, nine or ten years in the yard at Goulburn. In the Koori Yard, you know. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. It, it was old, you know, but it was a situation I was in, and I had to do my best with it. And all the brothers, you know, like I'm, I feel lucky, you know, but I feel lucky that I'm out and I'm moving on with my life, and I've got kids and I'm looking after them. There's still some brothers there that are still doing the same thing, you know. Like, yeah, I wish them well, but they're still there. They're still doing the same thing, and you know, I never forget. My heart still goes out for them brothers, you know what I mean? They're still doing the same thing. Like They might have changed themselves, but they're still in that same predicament, you know, from a decision they made years ago, and it's still it's still their, their reality every day now, you know what I mean? So I feel blessed. Yeah, no, nah, I'm with you there, my brother. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I, it's tough, you know, looking back on prison because it's it's such a waste in there, you know what I mean? Even though, you know, we've got brothers that are sitting in there and a lot of them aren't getting it out anytime soon. But yeah, that, that's why out here I, I still ride for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I still represent for the brothers in there. You know what I mean? Just in a in a more positive way, in a more positive yeah. light, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I watch I watch the show all the time. You know, and I, I see all the boys, like half the boys I see on the show, I I know as well. You know what I mean? Like there were some boys not too long ago that I done time with and spent time in the yard with. You know, and yeah. Yeah, and it's good to see them sort of changing their ways and being more positive with themselves as too, you know? It's a domino effect, eh, brother? It's a, it's yeah. a, dom it's a domino effect, man. That's why I get all, all different boys on here, you know what I mean? So that they can be that light for other brothers to jump on, to share their stories and um, yeah. just just help all the brothers out, man. So, I mean, brother, so you, you said that you're from a, a a mission, wasn't it, brother? So you grew up on a, a so that's a, like a Koori mission, eh, an Aboriginal yeah, mission. Yeah. So, so can, can you, can you sort of explain what that is, brother, for people that don't know? Um, For people that don't know, it's, um, it's very similar to maybe a village or something in the islands, but in, you know, obviously New South Wales, it's a small, more small area. So back in the days, it was originally, when white people come over here, they sort of 
it's sad to say, but they sort of herded Aboriginal people into certain areas and then even labelled it a mission reserve, you know, and it was not ideal, you know, when it happened. But as time went on, we've sort of grasped it as our own, our own place, our own area, you know, our own community. So every house is an auntie, an uncle, you know, like you, as a kid, you could run around, you could have a sandwich at auntie's house, go and watch TV at uncle's house, you know, like you sort of, but you, you're welcome in any door, you know what I mean? It's like your neighbourhood, but it's all family. Yeah, pretty much. So so you know the missions, but they're also for my New Zealand viewers as well. So when we say Koori, that's actually like what Aboriginals in Sydney and Victoria, that's their, like, that's what you call them, eh, brother? Like, it's... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so for my New Zealand viewers, so yeah, when we say Koori, so they go by different names. You've got the Kuris, you've got the Noongars, you know what I mean? You've got the Murrays in Queensland Murrays. and things yeah. like that. Yeah, brother, yeah. So for my New Zealand viewers, that's what we refer to when we're saying Kuris, which is just the Aboriginal people from New South Wales and then Victoria. So, yeah. um, yeah, bro, so, you know, with the, um, so with these missions, like, so they're in the middle of nowhere, is it, brother? Or like in the in oh, our bush? Sometimes, sometimes out west and out like Burke and Wellington, they're sort of, you know, ice, isolate, well, yeah, not isolated. Not isolated, but they're, yeah, they're far off, you know. But along the coastal, like my saltwater people, um, it's not so much isolated, you know. We're sort of along the coast. Our our people have been there for generations, you know. And, yeah, it's not so much isolated, but they're, they're not exactly in cities and towns either, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so in these missions, brother. So, so how was it growing up in these places? Tough, <laughs> you know what I mean. Tough, especially for fellas like me. Like all my cousins are all dark, you know what I mean, dark black, and you know my father's white. So, I cop a bit, you know, growing up and sort of had to, you know, toughen up quick. You know what I mean? Yeah, earn my earn earn my way. You know, and um, yeah, like it's tough. It's tough, you know, but I think it makes you who you are too, you know what I mean? Like, without that growing up the way I did, I feel like I wouldn't have the strength that I do in me today, you know what I mean? So back in the days, obviously, you know, um, conditions were worse, you know, like it, our people were given rations, food, and by the government and stuff like that. Coming to today's age, you know, it's not obviously that bad, but it's still not ideal, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's still, you know, things still aren't as good as they should be, you yeah, know, right. but, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so, I mean, um, so, like, how, how are they policed, bro? Like, um, the, the, the missions and things? Um, well, there's a land council, like, there's a central land council, um, and they sort of manage all the housing and all the all the happenings that go on in the community um so are they aboriginal as well or yeah they've got to be from that community you know oh, what i mean okay. they're, they're elective representatives of that community um yeah like so can outsiders like, just walk in can outsiders just walk in there bro or? yeah yeah 100 percent. yeah outside and come in you know we've had many you know obviously the older fellows like back in the days when i was growing up always on on a drink and stuff you know and and we had like uh, we had Islander fellows that come and drink with our uncles, you know, like white fellows come and drink and bring their kids on a mission and drink with our uncles. And yeah, it's welcoming like that, you know. And usually once someone's taken in there, they're 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 pretty good, you know. Like yeah, but a anyone's welcome. Yeah. So I mean, so how long did you stay in uh, to, uh stay there, bro? Did you end up moving to the city or? No, I grew up there, you know, like my mum, my mum's still there, you know. Oh, I, true. Yeah, yeah, bro, she's still there. I'm 35 now and I'm still, you know, I'm still a large part of it now, you know. I'll go home, like I'll be there this afternoon, you know. Oh, I mean, oh, yeah. Home. Yeah, like making sure everything's all good. But yeah, like it's never, you can't take it out of the boy, you know what I mean? Once you're a mission kid, you know, you're a mission kid and, and that's sort of it, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now I was locked up with a couple of brothers in Victoria that were in missions in New South Wales and that. Yeah. And tough, tough boys, bro. You know, yeah. I mean, good fellas, yeah. but they ain't scared yeah. to throw hands. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. You got, you got to, you know, especially being, like I said, being fair, follow. You know what I mean? Like me, like <laughs> my cousins. You know, they didn't make it easy for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And 
yeah, it is what it is. And yeah, but like I said, it shapes you into who you are now and who you become. And yeah, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change anything, you know? So what yeah. mob are you from, brother? And what, what? From the Waramai tribe. And um, they extend from like Foster along the coast all the way into sort of getting into Newcastle area, into the, into the town. Yeah. Only a small tribe, but yeah, a very much coastal tribe. Nice, nice. Well, I mean, so, um, well, bro, who were your role models, man, growing up out there? Um, I don't know, man. Look, I, I didn't really have any role models, you know. Like, my, I had an uncle, Eric Sims, that played for the Rabbitohs, you know, and he was sort of, he was sort of who, who we looked up to and, and stuff, you know. But that was probably some of my biggest issues that I didn't have the role models to look up to, you know. I sort of, yeah. I was, I was sort of stealing cars and, you know, went on from there to doing worse and worse, sort of engaging in crime. And, yeah, and probably one of the biggest problems that I had was I didn't have role models, you know. Yeah. 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 Well, was sports big, bro, in those missions? They play a lot of yeah. league in that? Well, yeah, always footy and, you know what I mean? Like, half the time we didn't even have footballs. We would play with a Coke bottle half full of water. <laughs> You know what I mean? And yeah, but even the girls, the girls who play will tackle each other, you know, don't take it no easy on your girl cousins. It was just, yeah, footy, you know, and running around all barefoot, you know, no shirts on. Yeah, that's just how it was growing up there. So, I mean, so so how was it for you, man, when when you did start getting picked up by the police and and um and into and, and so the boys' homes or youth justice? How was that? Yeah, it was hard, you know, like I because I'd never obviously spent time away from my family and my my extended family, you know, and when I started getting into trouble and getting caught up in all, like, all the sort of stuff I was doing, you know, I'd get taken away, taken away to boys' home in Newcastle and, you know, my family stuck by me in the early years and, and sort of would come and try and, you know, have my back and teach me better, but I was just the sort of stubborn rebellious kid you know what i mean i didn't want to have a bar of it and it took a lot of years for me to to take any notice you know to be honest i got in there you know and the thing was that there's a lot of other young brothers from you know tari foster newcastle that were in the same situation as me you know what i mean so it's not as if it was something that was a situation where like i don't want to be i'd sort of found my calling in a way you know what i mean like there's other brothers here like me that you know, come from missions like me, been in trouble like me, you know, so these are my brothers, you know, and, you know, it became, over the years, time and time and past, it became, you know, going back to see my other mob, you know what I mean, my brothers and things from boys home, you know, because they're all the same as me, you know. Well, I went into, I went into, you know, went through the motions, went from Reby in in Campbelltown, which is a big step, you know, like I'm in Sydney now, you know, from all the way from my home, was sort of lost a little fella, you know, but still angry and still pissed off at the world, you know, and got myself in trouble there, went through that for a few years, got to 15, 16, went to um, Frank Baxter at Carry On, you know what I mean? Like uh, went through the motions there, same thing, getting in trouble, fighting and, you know, didn't like authority, always mm -hmm. sort of, into the offices and wouldn't, you know, wouldn't, <laughs> whatever rules there was, I seemed to want to break them, you know. So um, went from there to carry on to the maximum security boys' home. Um, got there, you know, 2002-ish. Um, started turning it right on. I sort of got a bit bigger and a bit stronger by then, you know, and was a bit more of a handful to manage. Um, come 2004, you know, I'd have had a couple of riots there and we jumped up on the roof and set fire to the shit and, you know what I mean, got all sorts of happening and the um, juvenile justice system sort of put an application in to have me transferred to adult facility at 17, you know, because they couldn't manage me, whatever. So that went through, um, went and sat in front of a judge and a judge sent me to an adult facility at 17. Um so I went to MRRC at Stillwater at 17 years old, you know. Stayed there, you know, pretty much on lockdown for 23 hours a day for seven or eight months until I turned 18 because obviously they've got a duty of care. They couldn't let me out in the general population 
while I was still 17, you know, so. So, so when you went to prison, they kept you, um, like in management while in Victoria, in they call it, yeah, I was in Segra. Yeah, I was yeah. in Segra for six or seven months until I turned 18, you know what well, I mean? I mean, how, how, how was that, brother, you know what I mean, going into Segra at 17 years old and being stuck yeah. in there? How, how was that well, on the mind? It was hard, you know, but I just kept training, you know, I just kept, you know, knowing I'm not a kid, I'm not going to, you know, when they let me out, I'm not going to fucking compete, you know, so I just kept training and kept going at it and. It was hard that, you know, even, you know, as yourself, buy up form come, my buy up form, the tobacco would be scribbled out, you know what yeah. I mean? Because I'm still 17 and yeah, I can't probably. smoke, you know what I mean? So the boys, you know, the other boys sort of, oh, you're that young lad that come from Carry On, you know? I was like, yeah. So boys helped me out cigarettes and stuff like that. And yeah. But, you know, my family and my girlfriend at that time was still there and I still had some family support, you know? So that made it a lot easier too, but it definitely wasn't easy. You know what I mean? It was, yeah, it was definitely hard. So what was it like when you got let out the main, Bobo? So I got let out in the main and um, because the sort of corrective services had had this sort of unique situation where I'd come from carry, like come from juvenile justice at 17, um, they sort of had a, had a duty of care upon themselves to make sure that you know, I wasn't just sort of chucked into the deep end straight away as well. So I was given a job, um, a sweeper, you know what I mean? The sweeper in the in the reception area for a while. Um, sort of got my bearings on how everything worked, you know. Um, yeah. And unfortunately, I was still, you know, I, mean, I was still me. I was still a kid. I was still, you know, still had the chip on my shoulder. And it was only probably like, I think, 18 months later and I I was in Goulburn, you know what I mean? I was in Goulburn. I'd escaped from jail, been re rearrested again, you know what I mean? Taken to Goulburn, and that's where I sat for probably the next six or seven years, you know? Oh, yeah. Right. Well, what was your initial charges going in on that whack, brother? Oh, bro, I had like 30 something, you know what I mean? It was like oh. everything from aggravated carjacking to um, ram raids, um, robberies in company. Breaking enters, aggravated breaking enters, you know. Um, a lot of things had escalated from my time in boys' home too, like assault and staff. So I had like a lot of assault officers and, you know, things like that. So it sort of just escalated and kept going into the adult system. And then I got to um like they give me a they give me a C two. They give me a C class so when I was nineteen. Then yeah. I think I was at the C class so for like probably a week, <laughs> you know what I mean, a week, and I, I jumped the fence there, took off, stole a car, you know, fucking drove halfway through the desert. The car broke down in the middle of the desert. So um, I kept walking on foot to the next day and ended up coming across somebody and, you know, making them drive, whatever, and, and yeah, was re-arrested, you know, re-arrested in Bow Reynold in Victoria. Um, Yeah, re-arrested there taken to the police station at Durton and then transferred straight away by the squad and the rest of it, tactical officers, you know, back to Goulburn. Um, so, so pretty yeah. much what, what, once you got grabbed, you pretty much say uh, you can kiss uh, ever going back to a C rating um, after that, isn't it? 100%, 100%, brother. Like, I just got out last year, like I said, and I'm still E1. You know what I mean? Oh, I was yeah. 19 years old then I'm 35 now and I'm still an E1. So, you know, so... Yeah, yeah it definitely wasn't something smart. You know, what I mean? it wasn't it wasn't one of the brightest ideas. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I mean, um, so how how was that walking into Goulburn, man? You know, what I mean, I, I heard it's like walking back into the eighteen hundreds on that yard, brother. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, pretty much. Uh, so, so I mean, and then for you coming from, you know, going from that C rating as well, you only were there for a week. But yeah. I mean, so so how was it walking into there and and um, were you a bit taken aback by the politics? Like like you said, you know, there's different yeah. yards, there's the Koori yard and things. So how how was that on the mind? Yeah, 100%. But I still remember like the day they got me out of the truck, you know, and I was handcuffed and I had the big belt around my waist and the handcuffs to my waist and I had the leg shackles on and I've got four or five armed screws walking me down to, to D block, like down to the Segro D deck, you know what I mean? And um, I just remember looking around, like looking around, thinking, you know, I mean, like, what have I done? What have I got myself into here? You know, like, you know, all I could see is brick walls and raised wire, you know, and I thought, like, this place looks, this is, you know, I mean, this is the next level. But at the same time, I was to myself in my head, like, I'm a mate, you know, I mean, I'm not going to 
and you know what I mean? Like sort of g myself up, you know, like I didn't want, you know, like I had to just adapt to the situation, you know what I mean? Like I'm not going to be somebody's bit or anything, you know, so like I need to start training, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and go down to Segro. I was in Segro for a few months until they sort of, um, you know, come down, spoke to me, got a, got a handle on me or whatever. And then, um, yeah, the day I walked in the yard was – it was intimidating, no matter who you are, you know what I mean, or how big you are, or how strong you are. I don't care who you are, you know what I mean. You get chucked in that yard at Goulburn and just sort of gate opens, all right, off you go, in you go, and lock the gate, you know what I mean? Like, bro, it's, it's intimidating for anybody, you know what I mean? But you, as you know yourself, when you see a face that you know, <laughs> you know what I mean, you're cheering, like, yeah, sweet, you know. So luckily that happened for me. There was a few older uncles there that, hey, bud, you know, remembered me from, from MRC and all that sort of stuff, you know. So, hey, bud, what are you doing? You know, come here. You're right, nephew. You know, come over here and meet Kazo and this and that. So, I was sort of, you know, like there was a few boys there, you know, the Dougie Johnsons and Buster Burns and stuff like that. That sort of took me under their wing and um, made things a lot easier for me, you know. So, um, yeah, but I, I remained there for a long time. I, like I stayed there the whole time until I got out on the eight-year sentence. So I got out of there 20, 25. And I still oh, walked right. out of that so from there. Yeah, that's where I actually got, got out from as well. We got the brothers from Burke, the BLB, and brothers from Wellow, Dubbo, all sorts of crews. My brothers from along the coast, KMC, KMC boys, Tari boys, you know, boys from home, Kruor and Newcastle. Like, yeah, there's boys from everywhere, you know, but it's very overpopulated with the brothers, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but like you were saying just before, down in Goulburn, I, I guess the difference is that when you walk into the yard, it's not um, like Lifco or any other Maxo where you just you're in with other Nashos, you know. Because of the dramas and the stabbings and all the murders and that that was happening in Goulburn in the early 2000s, um, the powers of being made a decision to split each yard into nationality, you know, to stop the confrontation and all the all the violence that was happening. So I guess when you go there, it's a lot easier because it's only with your own people now, you know what I mean? So if you're Kuri, you're going with the Kuris and that's it. You don't get to associate or mingle with anyone else. If you're Lebo, you go in for your Lebo yard, that's it, you know, like same as the Islanders, Asians, you know, like, yeah, it's pretty much makes things a lot less different and, you know what I mean, like to any other jail, you know what I mean? Whether you're dark, whether you're light, whether you're big, whether you're small, you know what I mean? Like you're in with your brothers now if you want to be, you want to be a hero, you're going to get chopped down real quick. You know what I mean? Like, if you want to come in and be one of the brothers and, and you know, show love for your brothers and get along and everything, get, you're not going to stick your head up, you'll have no problems. You know what I mean? But, yeah, it's not the sort of yard you want to walk into and think you're top dog or try and be a hero like you was out in the street with your mates. You know what I mean? Like, because you'll, you'll be out on the stretcher real quick. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, um, so, so for, for you, brother, you know, going through the system, not only during that work, but all the other time that you've done as well. I mean, um, what are the toughest jails, bro? Is it Goulburn? Like, yeah, Goulburn, you know, but Lif Lifgo as well. Lifgo was pretty. Yeah, I heard about yeah. Lifgo as well. You know, I've had a few big run ins at Lifgo and, you know, things went to, sh you know, like, but yeah, like, but you don't sort of witness things anywhere else but Goulburn, you know, the the level of stuff I've witnessed at Goulburn, you know, with people running out, holding their guts, you know, like people missing eyes, you know, stuff like that. You don't see that anywhere else, you know what I mean? Like any other jail, like the things I witnessed over the years in Goulburn. So, yeah, I'd probably say Goulburn compared to anyone else, you know, anywhere else, sorry. So how, yeah. so how was it um after get, getting getting out after that stretch? How was it for you um getting back out? Did you end up going back to the mission or? Yeah, I ended up going back home. Went back to the mission, you know. Um, sadly, it wasn't long, you know. It wasn't long before I was back in. I was back in, I think, four or five months later, oh, doing wow. another six year stretch again. You know what I mean? Straight back yeah. to where I just got got out from after eight years, and I sort of, I was like. You know what I mean? Feels like I haven't even left, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, had to sit there for another six years, you know, sort of 
sort of that second one sort of broke my spirit a bit, you know what I mean? Like I started sort of struggling, you know what I mean? Like, is this, you know, is this, it? Is this all I'm going to ever amount to, you know what I mean, doing this? And, um, yeah, sort of struggled to get through it. Got, obviously got through it, you know, like have to, you got to put on brave face, you come out the yard every day, it's what's up, you know what I mean? But it's internally, you know what I mean? Like internally I was falling apart and it, it was hard, you know what I mean? I didn't want to, be there probably as much as the next bloke but the reality was i was there and i still had five years to go you know what i mean so yeah, yeah kick along with it and you know what can you do so i just tried to keep my head down do the you know do the jail and 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 get out and try my best again not to come back again you know <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 so so um, bro was was sort of like um substance abuse ever in the picture for you bro alcoholism yeah. or anything like that yeah, badly, bro. That's you know that was probably the main cause, but that's the difference between now and back then. You know what I mean? And I, I, I think I struggled to relate the issues with that. You know, so like, oh, just because I smoke ice or just because I smoke spots of gear and that, you know, like that's got nothing to do with me doing that. You know what I mean? It's you know what I mean. And I sort of always wanted to separate the two things. You know, like that the drugs never impacted me making a decision to do crime. But the reality was, you know what I mean, is that it had a big part in it, you know what I mean? And ever since I've made that decision not to touch it, and I don't, you know what I mean? I no longer surround myself with that sort of environment, them sort of people. I'm not in that sort of crowd at all, you know what I mean? I find it easier to just go about my shit every day, you know what I mean, without having to, you know, look over my shoulder or think, you know what I mean, let's go and do this or do that. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a big problem. Yeah. So, I mean, so obviously, you know, when you went back and did that six years, you know, things were starting to change a bit with the mentality, but you got to put that front on, you know what I mean? Got to put that armor on and, and not show any weakness. So, I mean, like, when did it really, well, so then you got out and then you went back again and then, yeah. so I mean, yeah. when, when did the, the mentality really start changing to get to where you are now? Well, the mentality changed before, you know what I mean? But like I said, I was in a situation, um, April 2020, where my mate called me, you know, and goes, look, Simsy, come and give us a hand. This this bloke owes me fucking this amount of money. Come and help me. He won't fuck around with you, you know. Come and help us. So I just want to speak to him, you know, get my money back. And I said, yeah, all right. So we go there. Well, turn, it turns to sh The bloke ends up getting shot, you know what I mean? And then and I'm sitting there thinking, what the fuck just happened? You know what I mean? Like, so the police are after us again, you know, I've been involved in this shooting and, you know, the police or no one, they just assume that my role was, you know what I mean, like to go there and, and, and knock the bloke over money or something, you know what I mean? So so they catch up with me and I go back in. But the mentality had changed a long time ago. But it was just I didn't change my situation. I didn't yeah. change my behaviours to do anything about it, you know what I mean? I thought that I could still do the drugs, smoke the drugs and that, but just not do crime and not go back to jail. Well, it didn't work like that, you know what I mean? Because when I used the drugs and smoked the drugs, I hung around with them people. When I hung around with them people, I was caught up in them situations. When I'm caught up in them situations, I'm going back to jail, you know what I mean? So I went back for this last one, and I just remember thinking, like, man, I'm involved in a shooting. Like, what if I can't deal, like, what if that? What if I can't get a solicitor that's going to be, you know what I mean, represent me good, and I'm doing another 10 years again? You know what I mean? Like, man, this is, you know what I mean? It's all too much. I can't, I can't be doing this. You know what I mean? Like, and I was just, I was blessed that I had a good solicitor explain the situation. You know what I mean? That I wasn't a shooter, but I was there. Yes, I was involved. You know what I mean? But so I ended up doing like, I think 18 months jail, another six, seven months rehab. Obviously it cost money. You know what I mean? Like cost money to pay for it all. And, it was me and the bloke that didn't do it that went to jail. The bloke that actually done the shooting has never been charged or, or, or anything, you know what I mean? So I think that's what their their attempt to lock us up was to try and get us to roll on him, you know, which was never going to happen. And, yeah, so they held us in custody for 18 months or something. But, yeah, it's went to court and it's all dealt with now. So it's all behind yeah. me. Yeah, it's all behind you, all right, yeah. brother. So, but, I mean, did you take that? So you were in there. Obviously, you're going up on some pretty heavy charges, which obviously you beat because you didn't do it. So, I mean, yeah. but 
that mentality of, you know, like you said, you'll be spending the next brick in there if you get found guilty. So, I mean, did you start taking those steps inside jail as well, bro? To... Yeah, 100%. 100%. I was like, you know what I mean? I had a lot, obviously, a lot of time to sit down and think again on top of all the years, you know what I mean? But that time to sit down and think, like, what am I doing? You know what I mean? What is it that I'm doing wrong all the time? That keeps bringing me into these situations and getting me locked up and, you know what I mean? Like, why do I keep coming back to this, you know? And I, so I went to Supreme Court bail after, I think it was about 16 months. Got Supreme Court bail to the rehab um, whilst the court was still going on. Um, went to the rehab, stayed there for five or six months, you know, like obviously no drugs, can't have drugs there. Training, um, you know, living a, like a healthy lifestyle, you know what I mean? Staying away from all the shit and that and then, I sort of felt like this is this is the, the the slow introduction to society I needed. You know what I mean? Instead of being just doing ten years jail and getting thrown out in the street, all right, off you go. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. felt like this, this was the slow introduction that I needed back into the community to adjust myself properly, and um and and put myself on the right foot and to do the right thing. You know what I mean? So yeah, I went well in the rehab. You know, after five or six months, um, my court was dealt with so I could leave the rehab, um, come out here, live with my partner, you know, been been working with my, you know, working since and my partner's pregnant. And yeah, I couldn't be happier to, to tell you the truth, you know. Was, Far I'm out, man. confident that all that's behind me, you know. Yeah, 100%, man. Life's just getting started, brother. Yeah, yeah 100%, cousin. That's the thing too. When you make the decision to stop that and and put that all behind you, good things happen too. You know, like ever since I've stopped, good things have just been happening in my life. Like that, not even I saw coming. You know, or, or I could have predicted if you asked me. You know what I mean? But it has been happening, and I think it's due to me getting up five o'clock, going to work every day. You know, getting home five at night, and you know, going to bed, having dinner going to bed, doing the same thing again the next day, you know what I mean? Like, that that these things sort of happen in my life, you know? What, how was it on the mission now? Um, well, how was it back home now, you know what I mean, when you sort of go through there? Yeah, I'll go home, you know, I'll go and see my family and not a lot's changed, you know what I mean? Not a lot's changed. You just see the next generations and it's the same old, same old thing, you know? But I go see my mum, see my family, say hello, and then sort of leave there. I don't. I don't spend a whole lot of my time there now, you know. Like me and my partner got our own place and sort of just go there when I when I go to see my family and that. But yeah, not a lot's changed. It's just different generations, you know what I mean? It's just you look around and see yourself in the little cousin, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of people that would look up to you, man, you know, especially speaking on here, you know, I'm sure that a lot of doors could open in, in, in that space of, you know what I mean, being some sort of a mentor out there for them, for the young brothers out there. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, I mean, if I was ever given an opportunity, I would, I would pursue that opportunity, you know, because like, I can relate to a lot of kids, you know, <laughs> like when you see them and people trying to tell them what to do, you know, that don't work. <laughs> you know what I mean? You've got to speak from experience and, and your own your own things, you know, for them to get that message, you know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, um, because for me, you know, so I work with um, you know, people out on parole, you know, what I mean, people out on bail, a lot of gang members and things like that, you know what I mean. And I find that it, it keeps you um accountable, you know what I mean, yeah. to really stick to, you know, what you're saying yeah. and things like that, bro. You know what I mean, yeah, and, and 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 walk that route you know what i mean so yeah definitely something i could see you doing brother you know after hearing yeah. your story i mean um yeah. well brother you know do, do you have any messages man for that for any young brothers out there or even brothers that you've done time with man you know what i mean any 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 messages you'd like to put out to the world brother yeah i just you know for the brothers that are still doing the same thing you know like caught up in in golden lift go kempsey wellington doing you know the time that they have to, like, it's never too late, you know what I mean? Like, when you get out, this time is your chance, next time is your chance, whenever, but it's never too late. You've got to keep wanting to do the right thing, you know what I mean? Don't ever give up and say, oh, fuck it, this is me now, you know what I mean? I'm just a crim. I'm just going to get out and get on it and thieve and do that again. Like, it's not going to get you nowhere. As long as you've always got that hunger to want to do better than what you're doing, it's only a matter of time, you know? So, yeah, never give up and 
all my brothers stay strong. <laughs> Yeah, both yeah. brother. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, awesome, bro. Well, look, man, we're coming to the end here, my bro. So, um, man, I really appreciate your insights, brother, and um, man, what you've been able to 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 overcome, mate. You know what I mean? That's that's yeah. awesome to see, bro. You're looking healthy, brother. You know what I mean? You're looking you're looking on the yeah. ball, my bro. So, man, the, the the world's your oyster at this point. Yeah, cheers, brother. I appreciate. It. All right, man. Well, look, brother, wishing you all of the best, man. If you're ever in New Zealand, bro, def definitely holla at me, brother. We'll go uh, we'll go fishing or something. We'll bro, go for a dive. Yeah, 100%. Cut this my video. I will 100%. <laughs> yeah. All right. Much love, Dane, and we'll, we'll speak oh. soon anyway, my brother. Yeah. All right, brother.